So I saw people tweeting about this game. Uh, like I, people kept tweeting pictures of it. Like, I had heard about it. I had seen the box, and then I had seen a news that said it came out on iOS and Android. I think Android. Uh, like just the other day, I think it's five bucks uh, to get the digital version. And then I sit down and pack out. This is like the first game that hits the table, and we played it two times. Yep. And that's full. enough to fully review it. I have one hundred percent understanding of the quality of this game. All right. So you sit down and you see this game, and you go, "Holy shit!" Your first impression, if you're, is, is this is the greatest game you've ever seen. Because it's got this little cardboard, like, potion machine that you construct, and you dump a bag of marbles in it, and they come down, like, fucking bejeweled, only it's in the real world and not a video game. Yep, and you, like, take marbles out, and then marbles fall down, and you make combos. It's like, whoa, this is, like, crazy. Like, that in its own is, like, the funnest, coolest thing. It's, like... Better than fucking Mousetrap. Like, holy shit, this, yep. is, this is amazing. Like, despite the utter simplicity of the, the rest of the game around it, that conceit was enough to where I actually had fun playing this game, whereas if it had a less clever conceit, I would have quit in the middle of the game and said, eh. Right, like, you see this mechanism, and you're like, this gonna be good. Let's do this. And then you play, totally the, okay. you play the game, and it's sort of a meh, average meh game. So here's my first observation about the game, is that... If you, because usually someone's going to teach you the rules, right? Uh, what I found is that most people who have played this game, because I talked to a bunch of people at PAX who have played the game because just because they played it before, nobody had the timing questions that we had. Nobody gave a shit. Like all the questions. Because it's, it's such a simple game. It's like a family game, right? That it is you basically would, a family you game. You wouldn't even think to ask these kinds of questions for such a basic game. But we asked those questions, and then when we grabbed the rule book, they didn't answer it in the rule book, nor did so, they answer it on Board Game Geek. So no some, one on Board Game Geek even asked the questions we were asking. So some of the questions we asked, I did discover, were answered in the rule book, but in obtuse ways. But they were consistent. But some of them, I don't think, were answered in a consistent way that would satisfy me. Mm -hmm. And you might say, but it's a simple game; it must not matter. It actually would matter a lot. It mattered a lot because uh, the bejewel part, the like make a combo is 100% of the game. Like, if you are smart and capable of seeing the best possible combo on the turn, that's it. That's it. That, that's, that's the, the whole only, game. The only skill-based thing in the game is looking at that pile of marbles in the machine and figuring out the most optimal way to get the most marbles to come out of it in one turn. Like, already, like... When you put the marbles back on the thing in the middle of your turn matters a lot. Mm -hmm. And the rules are vague and they say like you can't like you have to do it randomly and you can't direct them. But I could legit like do better at the game by pay holding my marbles in a certain way and dropping them so that the black ones fall into the channel I just opened and yep. continue my combo. They really need to change the mechanism such that... You need that baffles. It needs, a, it needs a tower on top of the mechanism. All it needs is on top of the mechanism, instead of dumping the marbles into this flat surface with a bunch of holes at the end, it should be... In Mar you ever use Marble Madness, like a marble race? Oh, yeah. There was the one piece that was basically a funnel, and the marbles would enter into it and spin and spin. It needs and that. And then it would go into the hole in the middle... Just put one of those on top to feed in. That way you put the marbles, they spin and spin and spin and spin, and they go down one at a time, completely out of any human control, into the potion thing. Yep. But the game really just comes down to, like, the rest of the rules are ultra, ultra simplistic, and it feels like the designers, and I don't know, there's three designers, uh, Castelli, Crespi, and Silva, and they've, they haven't done games I particularly know about, but I feel like they came up with this cool conceit and they and just then came, designed, up, they came like, up with the simplest game that they could attach to it. It is literally just, you pull, mar you pull a marble off, and then, or two marbles, I forget. You pull, you pull marble, one marble, one marble off. And then, any combos that get made with colors, you also pull those off until you don't get any more combos. So if there's blue, red, blue, you would take the red marble, which you now have. Now the two blue marbles hit each other, and two marbles of the same color handing each other makes them explode. So you would take those two blue marbles and any other adjacent blue marbles vertically only... And you take those, and then if that results in two marbles of the same color smacking into each other in that empty space you just created, you would take those and so on, and the most you could take would be an entire vertical column if they just happened to luckily be arranged in such a great way that never happened. But you could get a lot of marbles with good arrangements. Then 
You take those marbles, and in front of you, you got two potions, and the potions need certain colors and certain numbers of marbles to complete. So, like this one needs three red, four black, and a blue. So you put the marbles on the potions to try to complete them, and if you complete them, you get them, and then you take new ones. Each of the potions is a type that has an effect. They're like cards you can use once. And yeah, they're they're things e like, and basically you drink them to do stuff. The action on your turn where you pull a marble is the only time you get combos. So all the other options will let you take more marbles, but movement of marbles will not generate further combos from Right, those. so for example, there's a potion that you can drink to take one marble, but it, nothing explodes when you do that. Or take two marbles next to each other that are different colors. Yep. Stuff like that. Reuse the potion take you as, had before. Take as many marbles as you want from the bottom horizontal row, but no two of them can be the same color. So basically that means get a red, a blue, a yellow, and a black because there's only four marble colors. Yep. You're not going to use that until you're getting four out of it. Blow right? up all the marbles of one color in one row. Mm -hmm. And then you also have a tiny pool of three. You can basically keep three extra marbles around. Yeah, in case you get like a ton of red and your potions don't need a bunch of red right now, you can put three marbles and store them in the side area, like a sidebar. And that way when you get a new potion, then you can move those into there and you won't get, you know, you're not wasting the marbles. So the potions are all worth varying victory points. Basically, they do this, they do, they all do things. They're all equally powered. But the, mar the potions that take more marbles are generally worth a lot more victory points. And the game end is actually really weird and fiddly. So basically, the game ends, there's these chivos, achievements. And the achievements are like, get three potions of the same type, or get one, like five different kinds of potions. Mm -hmm. Each time, if you accomplish that, you take one of these achievements, it's worth like four points. Once all of the achievements are taken, the game ends after everyone gets an equal number of turns. Mm -hmm. But that, that doesn't feel super satisfying. Mm -mm. And really, the way the game goes is, you gotta make two fucking potions every round or you lose. Right, so that's the number one problem with this game is that you, you start, cannot catch up. Yeah, you have two potions in front of you, right? And it's very snowball-y. As soon as you finish potions, you now have these powers that make it easier to finish more potions. And then you, when you finish those, you get powers to help you finish more potions. But you can never, ever, no matter what, there's no way to finish more than two potions a turn. Every turn, you start with two potions in front of you. And the best you can do is to finish both of them. You can also only finish one or fail and finish zero of them. So the best you can do is two potions a turn, no matter what. If you don't do two potions a turn and someone else does, how do you catch up to them? If they, Because now, not only would you have to basically hope that they fail and you succeed in order to catch up, but they have more completed potions already available to them with powers that will make it easier for them to continue getting to a turn every yep. turn. So as soon as you fail to get two potions on a turn and so someone else hasn't failed yet, you may as well just quit because you can't beat them now. And one of the potions is an attack, and this is the one of the amb ambiguous ones, where basically it lets you can steal someone else's pool. You can steal their, their side marbles. But it the doesn't explain what the fuck it means by that. It just says steal, and we came up with like... Four different ways that could go down right, that were game-affectingly different. And it says you can use a potion at any time on your turn, even as soon as you finish it. So I finish a potion, right? And then it's a stealing potion. I use it, and I steal marbles from someone's pool. But my pool is full. Am I allowed to do this? Do I have to put the stolen ones into my pool? Can I put them directly onto my other potion that isn't finished yet? Yep, thus but I've finishing already, it. I've already done the part of my turn where I'm finishing a potion, right? Am I allowed to finish a potion then put more marbles in the other potion and then finish that one? Or do I have to put, you know, is my turn strictly take marbles, put marbles, finish potions? Is it that sequence or not? I think... And it's not entirely clear. The game, the, the potion stuff probably needs to be a little more complex, but more importantly, the game would be an interesting game of skill if it weren't a game where anyone who's smart can literally look at the board and trivially calculate the best possible combo they could make. Here's how I think the game should go. I would have a timer. You get 10 seconds to take your turn. Right. Here's the first thing that I would do. And if, you are, if you're holding marbles at the end of your turn when the timer runs out, they explode and you lose them. Here's what I, the, the two experiments that I would do first if yep. I wanted to make this game better. Experiment number one is what you just said, right? You want to take exactly the right number of marbles. Like punish people for having unused marbles. Yep. Right? The second thing I would do, though, is fuck your two potions a turn, right? There would be some potions just out there, and on your and turn, you make them. On your turn, you try to you take as many marbles as you can, right, via comboing, 
and then try to get finish as many potions as you can of the available potions. Oh, here's how to make that better. You, If you have extra marbles, you must put them into the pool p- potions, but if you don't finish one of those potions, they stay It makes it easier filled. for the next guy. For his yeah, next so right, now yeah, suddenly sure. the biggest combo might not be right. the best but one. But the point is just a whole bunch of available potions, and on your turn, you take as many marbles as you can and try to finish as many potions as you can. Ooh, draft the potions like Splendor. You could do like that, three too. Three tiers of increasing yeah. power. Drafting the potions is good also. Because then you have paths. Like, if you're falling behind, go for a bigger potion because you make the bigger potions have bigger powers, too. Right, you could basically make there's a lot like Splendor or Machi Karo, where instead of just take coins as your turn, it's, you know, there's a little game for taking the coins. And if you play that game well, you can get more coins. Yeah. Right? So that's the first thing I would do to make this game better. I think the timer better. is the most easy thing to do. Just, like, your turn is X seconds, and, like, 30 is the most I'd give. And just do what you can, make your shit, and you've, you'd better not be holding any marbles when the timer hits zero. Mm-hmm. Because then it's not a stare at the board for a minute to figure out the perfect combo. It's, ah, oh, shit, what do I do? Uh, I need black. Uh, oh, running out of time. Fuck it. Bam. Mm-hmm. That could be a much better game. Yeah, there's a lot of things you could do to make this game so better. It's just- the game is like but such a the cool mar- But the marble part is really cool. And you get the, when you, if you buy the game, you have the one time fun of putting together the marble machine. Yeah. Which is a little fun project, but so, take you 10 minutes. Like, it's a, it, it, you know what? If you have kids, like if you're a family, or uh, like, great kids like game. This is, like, this is a, like, A plus game. Super great kids game compared to like Candyland garbage. This is like, holy shit, so good. Yeah. A kid who plays this is going to be way like, better at like Bejeweled like type games. Elementary, when- even middle school. This is like an A plus game. Like, yep. holy crap. But for adults, is like, who are smart about games. It you is. Know, it yeah. is cork. I see this pattern a lot. It is a, it is a design pattern. But for pattern adults, tabletop. like, if you're like a, you know, if you're not super hard into games, if you're just sort of, you know, regular into games and you have like kids and you're going to play with them. Yep. You know, then it'd be great for you also. It could better than Candyland for you. But it's just, it's this almost design pattern of really solid core conceit. Everything else is lazy. Ship it. Yep. And this just, this fits that perfectly. But I've enjoyed it. I never need to play it again. The expansion. Adds nothing. The expansion I can see, Potion Explosion, the fifth ingredient, is just a fifth ingredient, and apparently it's just a wild card. You can just go buy a sack of marbles of a fifth color. Like, buy some white marbles, and there you go. There's probably new potions, and I, prob- I assume there's got to be some potions that require the wild card. Sure. But, uh, yeah. Whatever. It's an okay game. It's an okay game. That's all I got to say. You could buy worse. Yep. This has been Geek Nights with Rim and Scott. Special thanks to DJ Pretzel for the opening music, Cat Lee for web design, and Brando K for the logos. Be sure to visit our website at frontrowcrew.com for show notes, discussion, news, and more. Remember, Geek Nights is not one, but four different shows. SciTech Mondays, Gaming Tuesdays, Anime Comic Wednesdays, and Indiscriminate Thursdays. Geek Nights is distributed under a Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license. Geek Nights is recorded live with no studio and no audience. But unlike those other late shows, it's actually recorded at night.